Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. We're going to read Hosea chapter number 5. This is going to be my commentary on the book of Hosea, the series that I'm doing. So let's start at verse 1. Hear ye this, O priests, and hearken, ye house of Israel, and give ye ear, O house of the king. For judgment, for judgment is toward you, because ye have been a snare on Mizpah, and a net spread upon Tabor. And the revolters are profound to make slaughter, though I have been a rebuker of them all. I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me for now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. They committed spiritual whoredom. Verse 4. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their Lord. I'm sorry, unto their God. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredoms is, is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord. But they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself from them. See, people, there's a, a time when the Lord closes the door on and it's just, you know, let's face it. In the days of Noah, God shut the door of the ark. It was God that shut the door of the ark. It was just Noah and his family. That was it. The Lord closed the door and then uh, it was basically gurgle, gurgle, gurgle for the rest of the world. So, verse 7. They have dealt treacherously against their Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a moth, I'm sorry, now shall a month devour them with their portions. Blow ye the cornet in Gibeah and the trumpet in Ramah, Cry aloud at Beth Haven after thee, O Benjamin. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. The princes of Judah were like them that remove the bound. Therefore I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. You know, there's a difference between judgment and wrath. You know, judgment spanking your kids, but uh, wrath is, well, let's just say that wrath is final. Verse 11, Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore will I be unto Ephraim as a moth, and to the house of Judah as rottenness. Now what's a moth do? A moth eats wool, right? You got a closet full of nice clothes, moth uh, wool clothes, nice and warm in the winter, and next thing you know, a bunch of moths in there. And you got a bunch of holes in your clothing. Kind of hard to stay warm in the winter when you got a 
bunch of holes in your clothes, right? Verse 13, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian. See, Ephraim was probably having trouble with people, another, uh, another group's army. So what does he do? Does he go to the Lord? No. No, he goes to the Assyrians. To their, to their king so that he could get protection from the Assyrians who were wicked instead of relying on the Lord. So Then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob, Yet could he not heal you nor cure you of your wound. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah, I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 17, Peter says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Let's read a companion verse. Jeremiah chapter 2. I guess we'll read the whole chapter, starting in verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was, past tense, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend, evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me? Now, there, you know, the Lord's asking, What evil have I done to you people? What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Vanity means useless, worthless, vain. Something that's vain is worthless. And have walked after vanity and are become vain. Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal, or Baal. Baal was a satanic god, people. The Lord's prophets prophesied by Satan, basically. And the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will plead un, uh, with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children, 
will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see and send unto Kedar and consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this time, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Two. One, two. They have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Wow. Let's take a look at something else. All right, let's read verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. And the children of Noph and Tahaphanes have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor? Now, the Bible doesn't say much, I've never found anything good about Egypt in the Bible. I mean, you know, Egypt was just full of satanic uh, gods. Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. Listen carefully, verse 19. Speaking of Israel. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Oh yeah, God's going to spank them good. And thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Oh boy. How about Jeremiah 7:28? But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. However, there is some hope. Jeremiah 30, 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. So in other words, there will come a day when all the other nations will have an end. But God won't make a full end of his children. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. How about a second witness? Jeremiah 46, 28. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant. God calls Jacob his servant. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith the Lord, for I am with thee, for I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee, but I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure, yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. All 
All right, let's read another companion verse, Ezekiel chapter 20. Uh, I'm going to read most of it. Let's start in verse 1. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. So they're coming before the Lord to ask him some things, right? Verse 2, Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. So if you want to ask the Lord something and get expect to get an answer, you better make sure your heart's pure and clean. Verse 4. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not, defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes, and showed them my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. You see, people... God is a great king, and he wanted to be their king. But as you read in the book of Samuel, Israel wanted a human king. And God said, okay, you want a king? And he gave him Saul. And then after Saul, David. But you know what? They rejected the Lord as king. And every king, every kingdom has a king, and every king and kingdom has laws. So verse 11, And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. In other words, these are his laws. Verse 12, Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord, that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not, they walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them, and my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. 
Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, mine eye spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them, and hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me, they walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths, then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish mine anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Therefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth their womb, that I might make them desolate to the end, that they might know that I am the Lord. When they're talking about passing through the fire, they're talking about burning their own children alive to the satanic god Molech. Verse 27. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand, to give it to them. Then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their, their sacrifices. And there they prevent, presented the provocation of their offerings. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. But they, uh, my note, they did this not for the Lord, but for the satanic gods, right? Verse 29. Then I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bema unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? When ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols even unto this day, and shall I be inquired of you? I, I'm sorry, and shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, 
So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations and all your holy things. I will accept you with sweet savor when I bring you out from the people. And will gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And ye shall and there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe. What does loathe mean? It means to hate yourself. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord. You see, people, even in the wickedness, the Lord is going to forgive those that acknowledge their evil ways and obey his voice. And as we read in 1 Peter 4.17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God. America is not going to repent. Only a remnant is going to be saved, people. With this, I'm going to close Zephaniah 2 and verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All glory to the Son and all glory to the Father. In Jesus' name, amen.